Okay, we're back for section 6.2, trigonometry of right triangles. Um, <clears throat> so to get into this one, we'll, and we'll just jump right in. To get into this one, we need to look at some relationship of, of what we've learned before to what we're learning now. So what we've learned before about, about uh, trig values is we take some arc on the circle and we start at the point one zero to put this angle in standard form so here's our angle that is formed we start at the point one zero that's on the positive x-axis we travel anti-clockwise up to the total length of our angle our arc and uh, we arrive at some terminal point And this x and y point uh, are the cosine and the sine values. Okay, but today we're going to learn about something a little bit different, but related. So instead of being on a circle of radius 1, we're going to look at any circle radius r. Now that's, that's not a huge deal, because if our radius is bigger than, bigger than 1, then we can always remember that this little unit circle is like still inside there and this angle inside the unit circle is exactly the same as the bigger angle out there right okay so in terms of radians this angle is exactly the same in terms of degrees this angle is exactly the same the only difference is um, it's just a bigger circle, right? Or if our circle is, you know, bigger or smaller than and than one, then this outside circle is the radius one unit circle, and this inside one is the new radius circle. And but it doesn't change much because we're just dealing with the smaller circle. The angles remain the same, whether you're in degrees or radians. So <clears throat> the new thing for this section is to look at this angle that's formed and think about it in terms of this right triangle that is formed. Okay? Right? Okay, so the big idea here is that there's a, there's a nice relationship between this triangle and these x and y coordinates and this radius. Right, so the x, y coordinates of the terminal point, the sides of this triangle, that's what those are, the lengths of them, and this radius. So we used to think this x was just the cosine value. And we used to think that this y was just the sine value. And that's true on a unit circle. On a circle of any radius, there's one slight modification that we make here. Those x and y coordinates are actually the radius times the sine and the radius times the cosine of the angles. Okay, that's, that's the only difference here the only difference. Okay. All right. So, um, there's an awful lot in this section. Um, all about some trig functions and trig values. Uh, but with that, we'll just jump right in. Um, okay. So, Let's look at that triangle, and now I'm not even going to look at the uh, look at the circle. <laughs> I'm just throwing the circle away altogether now. Uh, we could think about you know this being the terminal point. This is the center of the circle, so this has some x y coordinate. So what is what is this bottom length here? This bottom length is x, isn't it? And what is this height here? This height is y. 
Okay, this is this hypotenuse is r. So we, we do know this relationship x squared plus y squared is r squared. We do know that relationship. Okay. Um, so what is this angle? Or what is the sine of this angle, or the cosine of this angle, or the tangent of this angle? Well, the, I'll start with, um, let me call this angle. Mm, it's an easy letter. We'll do, yeah, we'll just go with theta still. So what is the sine of that angle? What is the cosine of the angle? What is the tangent? And then we can look at reciprocal functions as well. Okay. <clears throat> so instead of now talking about these things like x and y coordinates, you know, when you take the right triangle approach to trigonometry, you often talk about it in terms of opposite sides, adjacent sides, and hypotenuse. Okay, and it, it directly translates into things on the circle um, because we can place this triangle in a circle of some radius r. Um, so if this is our angle, I'll briefly describe this. We have three different sides of the triangle and one of them is always fixed. Okay, so this, this one's fixed. This is the hypotenuse of the triangle. It is the side opposite the right angle. So I put this box here to represent that this is a square angle. It is a right angle. Okay, and hypotenuse. Yeah, e at the end. Yeah, I was thinking ahead. Miss Bell. Um, the hypotenuse is always that angle opposite this right angle. So if if I change my theta to be this angle up here, this ang this side still is the hypotenuse. It doesn't change. But the other two sides, which I'm going to discuss now, switch places. OK, and I'll get to that in a second. So the side that's opposite the angle in question, we often refer to that as the opposite side. Okay, The side that is next to, it's one of the two sides which form the angle that we're talking about. We call that one the adjacent side of our triangle. Okay. Um, if we say, hey, no, this is the angle we're talking about. Not this one over here. This is the one we're talking about. Well, then the opposite side is actually this one down here, isn't it? And the adjacent side is actually this one. So <clears throat> with these, with these uh, names, you kind of need to be careful. Um, this side is not always the opposite side, depending on which angle you're talking about. The hypotenuse always stays the same. Again, it's always the side opposite the right angle. Okay, so um, how do we, from triangles like this, compute trig values? Well, it's pretty easy. Not quite as easy as uh, looking at the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, but it's still pretty easy. The sine, which should be the y-coordinate, is always the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Okay, and this gives you the formula that I gave before. It's r times theta, r times sine theta is the y-coordinate. Cosine is always the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which gives you the formula that I gave before, that r times the cosine of theta is always equal to the x-coordinate. You just have to scale the unit circle out or in, depending on the radius. What's tangent? It's always equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Okay. Now, how is this equal to sine over cosine? Do you remember that formula? Well, y over r divided by x over r. That's sine divided by cosine. These r's just cancel out, don't they? And you're still left with y over x. So 
So this is still in agreement with the uh, what the quotient definition of tangent of sine of theta over cosine of theta. Um, it just looks a little different. There's a nice little saying um, to keep these keep these definitions in mind, um, and it, it goes like this: It's so katoa. So S O H sine is opposite side over hypotenuse. Ka cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And toa, T O A, boa but with a T. Toa is tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so this this so katoa uh, is the yeah, like mnemonic device, the memory device to help you remember from a triangle what the values of sine, cosine, and tangent would be in terms of these fractions, these ratios. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, what about the reciprocal identities? Uh, well, cosecant would be radius over um, over y, radius over opposite. So cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that's r over x, which is secant is uh, the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. And cotangent, cotangent is adjacent side, right? So x over y, which is the opposite side. Uh, I like to pronounce this in like the the Spanish or uh, what's the I think it's French, right? French pronunciation. Uh, Chosha chow. Uh, it's like some stupid little saying that I like to I like to, I think it's funny to say. There's a, everyone remembers Soka Toa, right? Everyone remembers that, but no one remembers the French or Spanish equivalent for this reciprocal uh, trig values, which is Chosha chow. You know, maybe there's a comma here. Chosha, chow, you know, like your friend's name is Chosha. I, I guess I don't know. <laughs> I think it's funny. Um, right. So, so these are these. This is it. Right triangle trig is is basically summarized with this entire like with this. Like this is right triangle trigonometry. It, it defines how you get from any right triangle sine and cosine and tangent of the angles inside that triangle um, which you know keep in mind we, we can insert this triangle into a circle of radius equal to the hypotenuse so this is really just restating what we've learned uh, but drawing a triangle as well okay um, so uh, really really common examples of things like this you know, things that you probably saw uh, at one point in time is you know you just draw any old right triangle you give it some side lengths and this is where you really started to memorize like your Pythagorean triples right <laughs> so that you know for sure you got a right triangle uh, right 9 plus 16 is 25 3 squared plus 4 squared is 5 squared you started to memorize your Pythagorean triples when you learned about things like this so that you could, were guaranteed to uh, draw a right triangle. Um, three, four, five is the, is the easiest one to remember. And then you're asked, hey, what is the sine of this angle? Now, sine of that angle, that's just equal to the opposite side, in this case, four, over the hypotenuse, which is five. So it's four fifths. Okay, what is the uh, cosine of that angle? Let's well, just equal to the adjacent side, so that's three in this case, over five. And what is the tangent? That's uh, just the opposite side, four, over the adjacent side, three. Okay, uh, that's it. Okay, that. that it's like literally the first two pages of 
of this whole thing, the third of this whole section, the third page is literally um, this. How do you find the reciprocal values? Uh, we've explained that. We, we know that from the circle uh, trigonometry unit. Uh, it's just the reciprocals of these things. So cosecant is 5 fourths. Secant is 5 thirds. Cotangent is 3 fourths. It's just the reciprocals of these things. Okay, that hasn't changed. The definitions of these things hasn't changed. Okay, and that's it. It's a really short section, like really short. And it just it just introduces this, this idea of the trigonometry inside a right triangle. That's it. So uh, we've got one more section for this week. It's 6.3, which is trigonometric functions of angles. Okay, trigonometric functions of angles, which is, well, yeah, I guess it's a, it's a little bit different, but uh, it's not too complicated. Not too complicated at all. So we'll get into that, and we will um, just go from there, okay? So I, I, there's really not a whole lot of new material from these sections. It's just trying to introduce now this idea of thinking about trigonometry in terms of triangles, okay? So I hope that helped, and I will see you in the next one.